attractive girl from the east inherits an oil field and is shrewd enough to make it pay off, that was news in the early West. But it was also news when a young doctor from Rising Springs became involved in the inheritance. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. Doctor, what are you doing up so early? Morning, Miss Cameron. I've got a sick boy upstairs. How's your cold? All gone, thanks to your medicine. Morning, Clint. Morning, Doc. Hello, Donna. How are you, Clint? Fine, just fine. But I haven't had any luck yet finding you a drilling crew. Oh, I meant to tell you. You don't need to bother now. I've located Mike Shea, who used to be father's head driller, and he got some men for me. Well, that's great. You're going to start soon? Yes. There's a little work to be done on the old Valley Number 1 rate, but we should be able to start drilling tomorrow. I'm taking some groceries out now to the crew. Mike is waiting for me outside. I'm a little late. Now go ahead. I'll see you later. that Miss Cameron had an accident. Yeah, you're a lucky girl. You're not hurt. Suffering more from shock than anything else. Oh, I can believe that. It was a horrible experience. Have any idea why those men were after you? Doctor, I'm gambling for millions. I haven't any idea who tried to kill me. But where there's money involved, even your best friend can become a Judas. I'm here trying to continue the oil drilling operation my father started on his ranch before he died. I admire your courage, but it's a rough game. Watch your step. I know. Everyone warns me it's no business for a woman. But, well, it's not only the money that's involved. Dad always said there was a big oil pool under that field, and I'm going to prove that he was right. And the last thing I'll do is sell out. Obviously, someone else thinks there's oil there, too. Well, good luck to you. If I can ever do anything for you, either professionally or privately, don't hesitate to call on me. Thank you, Doctor. I'm likely to need plenty of help, and I'll certainly remember you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Clint. How's Miss Cameron? Oh, she'll be all right. She's suffering more from shock than anything else. Well, that's good. How well do you know her, Clint? Well, I uh, knew her when she was a kid. Knew her father for years. He wasn't much good, a drunken, long-shot wildcatter. She came out from the East about a month ago, and since we're both interested in the oil business, we've got pretty well acquainted. Why do you ask, Doc? 
Oh, I don't know. I just thought maybe somebody ought to persuade her to sell out before she gets in any more trouble. Mm hmm Well, that's an idea, all right. It'd certainly be a lot safer for her, and I'm sure I can find her a buyer. Uh, you mind if I go see her? No, go ahead. Thanks. you to drop in. But why don't you warn a lady? If I'd ever thought that long, spindly-legged tomboy would ever grow up in... I might have had long legs, but they were never spindly. Or were they? They were. But they aren't now. Oh, Clint. You're so plain, unvarnished, honest. That's what I like about you. Well, I'm glad you like something about me. Because I don't think you will after what I have to say. You want me to quit? Yes. Clint, can I tell you why I've got to go ahead? If it'll help any. When Dad died, all he left me were a few worthless stocks, cats and dogs in this ranch. The last thing he said to me was, hang on to Section 9, Donna. There's a million barrels under it. Now, this may sound like a cruel thing to say, Donna, but you know your father's pride. But don't you see, Clint, why I've got to go ahead? That I owe it to Dad. That I'd never forgive myself if I didn't. No, I don't. What do you suggest? Well, the only smart thing to do is sell. Can I? I think I can dig up a buyer. And one thing you must know, Donna. If I can't, I'll die trying. I know, Clint. Somehow, I think I've always known. Of course, it's an unproven site. But the structure's always been promising, and with the rig already set up, I think I can get you 25000 What would the field be worth after I hit oil? First, you have to hit it. But if you should ever change your mind, my offer's still open. Thanks, Clint. I know you think I'm a stubborn little fool, but it's because of Dad. You understand, don't you? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. We came just about as close to killing her as we could the last time. If that didn't scare her out, what will? All right, then. If we can't scare her out, we'll run her crew off the job and wreck the rig. And we won't be fussy about how we do it. The million's involved in this deal, so it's no holes barred. Line up three or four more men, and we'll ride out there tomorrow. Kind of changed your tune about hurting the dame, haven't you? What do you mean? All I want is to stop that well until I can deal her out of it. It's always bad business to rough up a woman, you know that. Sure. Please cover up and go to it. But try not to hurt anybody. Come in. Thank you. I want to apologize for calling you, doctor. This isn't a professional visit. But you did tell me you'd help me if I got into trouble, didn't you? Of course. I heard about the trouble you had out the oil rig, and I'd be happy to do anything I can. I suppose I should appreciate your advice, but I know you'd only tell me to sell out, and I'm not going to. At least not yet. All I want is some help protecting my men and property. Well, did you talk to the sheriff? My driller, Mike Shea, reported the attack. But all the men were masked, so the sheriff doesn't have very much to go on. So you're going ahead anyway? I certainly am. 
If I can talk the sheriff into furnishing me some protection for my men. And I thought that's where you might help me. Do you know the sheriff very well? Oh, yes. I'm sure he'll cooperate any way he can. Doctor. Someone's been listening. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. What do you want? Why are you listening at Miss Cameron's door? It's no crime to stop in the hall and fix your boot, is it? Maybe you ought to go to the sheriff and have a talk with him. You just might be one of the fellows he's looking for. Sheriff, it's you in your head. Who is he? His name is Steve Herrick, works part-time for Clint Forbes. Clint? Why, you surely don't think he had anything to do with it? I don't know, but Clint's in the oil business, and it might be to his advantage to force you to sell out. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. Why, Clint was the one person who understood my father. He protected him when everybody else called him a drunken crackpot. Why, he's offered to help me any number of times. You can't arrest him just because that man used to work for him. It's up to you, Sheriff. I'll take this man over to the office and question him. How'd you make out with the Sheriff? All right. This time I'm really in the clear. Boss, I know Steve too well. He wouldn't be listening at that door on his own. Somebody paid him to do it. Yeah, I know. But if we didn't hire him... You tell me who did. Get out of here. Donna. Hello, Clint. How are you? I just came from the sheriff's office. I hear you've been having more trouble. Oh, it was nothing. In fact, the drilling's going very well now. We'll get the boiler repaired and tap into the oil pool any day now. But, well, I want to talk to you, Clint. Sure. Let's sit down. Clint, I'm afraid I'm beginning to lose my nerve. Why? You're over the worst of it now. I know, but I'm worried. There's been one man wounded, and who knows what's going to happen in the next few days. So, what do you want to do? Clint, this is a man's job. Living in fear of being murdered every day. I've decided to sell out. Well, now that's quite a surprise. But my offer still stands. 25,000. Might even be worth a little more now. With all the trouble I've had, someone else must think it's worth a lot more. We caught a man last night listening at my door. The sheriff said he worked for you. That's right, Donna, but he hasn't been on my payroll in six months. If I could only find out who he is working for, I'm sure they'd pay me the price I'm asking. How much do you want? Well, it seems to me the field should be worth $100,000. Don't you think so? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly raise it. But I just find anyone who could pay that much. That's all right, Clint. I understand. But if Steve Herrick wasn't working for you, then he's probably working for the Joslin Oil Company. I'll contact them. I'll bet they'll pay the 100000 uh, Give me until tomorrow. I'll see what I can do. I'm sure you can do it. It would uh, be all cash, wouldn't it? Yes, of course. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. You hear that? Yeah. 
are. We'll see if you can find Steve Eric and who he's working for. Somebody else is trying to beat us out of that oil lease. We can't find him. We're forced to raise $100,000 by tomorrow. I'm sure he's left town. But I'll look her up. Morning, Fred. Morning, Doc. Hey, Mike. Oh, hello, Doc. What are you doing in town? Some more trouble at the well? Nope. I just got fired when Clint Ford bought out Miss Cameron. She paid me off and gave me a bonus, too. So she sold out. Clint going ahead with the drilling? Yeah. And a lot of blow in today, too. Too bad you couldn't stay around for the payoff. I'll be there. I'm riding out there right now. I sure don't want to miss that show. Doc, been waiting long? No, not very. I've got some news for you. Yes? Miss Cameron sold out to Clint. Is that right? Maybe that explains part of it. Explains what? Clint may have bought Miss Cameron out, but he can't buy me off. There's a matter of attempted murder of Miss Cameron and those men that were injured on the oil, Derek. This case isn't closed yet. Yes, that adds up. Where does this leave Clint? Puts him number one on my suspect list. He ended up with her property, so it's a good bet he had something to do with scaring her out. Anyway, I'm going to have a talk with him. He's out at the oil rig now. They expect to bring it in this afternoon. I've never seen one of those things blow in. Is it all right if I go along with you? All right, let's go. Just sunk the last piece of pipe, boss. We're standing by ready to cap it. All right. Tell them to go ahead and let it blow. What are you doing here? Well, you know, Mr. Forbes, I put a lot of time in on that old rig. Just want to see what happened when you bring her in. All right? Yeah, I guess so. There's a lot of pressure in there. You want to see what you really got? Huh? Well, there's no oil in there. That's right. Not a drop. Nothing but mud and water screwed up to that gas pocket you just tapped. You know it's only a gas pocket. You big greenhorn. Why do you suppose old man Cameron stopped drilling that field for last year? You know you're going to be the laughing stock of town? You mean he found out there was nothing but gas here? That's right. I don't believe it. Because Donna must have known it too. Why did she start drilling again? Oh, she wasn't drilling. She was just going through the motions till she found some easy mark to sell out to. Looks like she found one. Glad to see you, Sheriff. 
You've got a job to do. Clint Forbes has gone after Miss Cameron. Huh? What are you talking about? Well, he found out that she sold him a no-good field. I had to open up my big mouth. How long ago? He hadn't got much of a head start on you. He took the back road. Let's go. Deputy! Miss Cameron. Why, you no good little thief. What are you talking about? About $100,000. Where is it? It's safe. You made the deal. Everything's legal. Legal? You hired Steve Herrick, didn't you? You were the other party interested in that oil land, weren't you? Weren't you? Sure, I hired him. It's a rough game, remember? You said so yourself. Come on, you... Why don't you give up? Sheriff, arrest this man. He was the one that raided my wells and who tried to kill me. Can you prove it? I'll sign a warrant or anything else you want. Don't let her get away with it, Sheriff. She's the one who hired Steve Herrick. She paid him to listen at her door. He had every reason in the world to be listening at my door. I hired him as a bodyguard. There's no law against that, is there? Bodyguard? It's like you can take care of yourself. That was in self-defense, Doctor. He struck me. Oh, come along, Clint. Doc, you better come along, too, and fix up his arm. And don't you leave town until I tell you, because I want to talk to you. You knew that oil field wasn't any good all along. The sheriff's just checking her out. Good morning, doctor. Those pills you gave me for insomnia didn't do me a bit of good. I never closed my eyes last night. There's nothing wrong with the pills. If you think it was my conscience, doctor, that was bothering me, you're wrong. I didn't do anything illegal. No, I suppose not. She sure handed Clint a sharp deal. Don't think too badly of me, doc. Remember, P.T. Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute. Yes, I suppose that's one way to look at it. And why not? Clint pulled several crooked deals on my father, and he tried his best to run me out. I only paid him back with his own medicine. And made yourself a nice chunk of money on the side. Here's enough money to pay for the medical expenses for the men that were injured in the oil fields. And what's left over is your medical fee for attending me. I'm sure the men and their families will appreciate it, but you don't owe me anything. Of course not. It's for the Rising Springs Charity Fund. There's my stage. You've been so anxious to get rid of me, Sheriff. We'd better be going or I'll miss it. Oh, no, you won't. Come on. I don't suppose I'll be seeing you gentlemen again. I hope not. Get her out of here. Now, bitch! Get! Now! Now! Good riddance. What happened to Clinton and his gang? They pleaded guilty and the judge sentenced them to two years for attempted murder of Donna and the men at the oil fields. I'd like to see the day he catches up with him. 
I'll bet you by the time he serves his sentence, he parlays that 100000 into a million. Well, it could be, but I still say good riddance. I was wrong about Donna making her first million. I heard later that she ran into somebody just a little smarter, and the 100000 she took from Clint changed hands again. This time, Donna was the one who was broke and in jail. There's an old adage that says, if you want peace and contentment, go out and earn it with an honest day's work.